Hello and welcome to the procedural sci-fi series. Now, I've got some updates for you with the latest version of Blender. So as Vin Blender's moved forward, uh, there's been a few tiny changes to some of the nodes that we use in this series. So when you uh, encounter them in the series, you're gonna might be a little bit confused because the numbers you have are gonna be a little different from uh, what I have in the video itself. So I thought I'd just walk you through real quickly what's changed so that you can be aware of it. The main culprit here is the Veroni texture node. Now, if you haven't watched the series yet and you haven't learned all these things, this won't make a lot of sense to you. So uh, what you might wanna do is just wait until you hit that point in uh, episode, so it's part two, when we talk about EV and materials. Uh, that's when we first start doing this. And uh, you'll get to this point where we add the Veroni texture. And it's a little bit different. Let me show you what it looks like. I'll pull up. All right, welcome back to the next, the actual episode here. And so you can see in the old version of Blender, uh, the main difference lies here. You have these three options, intensity, distance, closest, the vector input, and then a scale input. And you can output color or the factor. Now what Blender has is uh, a different Veroni texture node. We have now have an input here for how many dimensions do you want your Veroni texture to be, okay? so. If you wanted to emulate exactly what we have in the tutorial series, which is probably the best way to start, when you create a Veroni texture node, so if I add one here, you can see the default values are 3D, F1, Euclidean, a scale of five, and a randomness, randomness of one. If you wanna imitate exactly what we've got in the video, what you can do is you can leave all those features, leave, leave all those settings the same, and uh, what we're gonna do is you would take the distance output. Now you notice this is a new output. So the old memory just had the color and the factor, but now we've got distance, color, and position. Now you'll notice the distance here is written, whereas in the previous node, it was in drop down menu, you could select distance as one of the options. So now distance is a constant option you can always get. Um, the technicalities of what's going on here behind the scenes, this is really, it's beyond the scope of the series and it's not important to know. Really, a lot of what you do is you, you throw these nodes down and you play with them and you, you see what results you get. And that's a lot of what we do in the series. But just to make a long story short, to emulate the exact look with the new mode, with the new node system, all you gotta do is take the distance output and you need to put it into a, a math node. So we wanna multiply these values together. You get this node by adding shift A, type in math, and then we can just go to multiply as the function that we wanna be doing or the operation we wanna do. And then you just take, of course, the distance, but plug it in the top, plug it in the bottom, and then you can output this value out to whatever it is that we do. So in this case, a color ramp from here. So this will be just the extra step that you need to add in. Now, if you open the project files uh, from the series, you'll notice that this has already been updated for you, and um, that's, uh, that's, that's across the board. So anything that's changed, we've updated it. Uh, Blender updates it automatically so that uh, it uh, it works in the same fashion. So, so by multiplying the distance by itself, this is gonna give you the same output as what we used to have. Um, now, uh, one other thing to note, you might run into if you open the project files or your own files as you make this project, that's something I don't think I actually touch on in the tutorial series, is that when you're creating um, a system or trading an object with all these modifiers, and then you have all this procedural um, texturing going on, Sometimes you get this situation where when you open your project files, so you might see this with some of your project files, you open them, and the texture will look one way, but then as soon as you grab it, so if you select the object and hit G to grab, suddenly it's gonna pop and stretch across the object. Um, and uh, that has to do with the way uh, Blender is figuring out how to place the UVs across this object. So it's just a little bit of a, a confusing thing that can happen, so if that you run into that, that's what's going on. Just, just grab an object um, and it'll, properly set up the material as soon as you do that. So this is actually calculating the way we want it to right now, um, whereas when we first opened it, it wasn't. So you can see now if I grab it and move it around, it's not gonna change uh, back to that old way because that's not the way we wanted it. So uh, the other node that's changed a little bit is the Musgrave texture, but it's not really gonna impact this series or impact you very much. We've actually just lost the, uh, the gain and the uh, offset values. But what we do have now is this drop down here again for 3D. So this is just how many dimensions do you wanna have in your material. So um, if you go to 40, you get this nice extra value, a W value, which uh, can evolve your texture if you change that. So you see if I drag this around, 
it's kind of just evolving my my bump texture a little bit. Um, it's just kind of an extra way to add in one more layer of detail. Um, but uh, typically speaking, if you just leave it on 3D, it's gonna be the same as what we have in the series. So that's really it. Those are the only things that have really changed. Um, everything else is good to go. So I hope you really have fun with the series. Hope you learn a lot and uh, have a great time with it. I will catch you in the next tutorial. See ya. Oh, 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 oh,